truly want to say, Lagos, I love you. Thank you for believing in our ministry. Hallelujah. Um, it's one thing to be anointed, but it's another thing for people to love you, to believe in you enough to commit themselves. I know how many of you take my teachings all around. Some of you have taken it to nations, and I don't even know you. But I want you to know that I love you and we do not take it for granted. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Um, I, I, I have a lot to share throughout this conference. I really do. I really do. You know, when you are faithful in the level of revelation that God gives you, um, he blesses you by increasing your spiritual understanding. And... Grace and peace, remember, is multiplied through knowledge. And so God does not give you grace just by giving you grace. He gives you grace by expanding your spiritual horizon. And, and these are some of the things that God is granting. So I, I am I'm like a woman that is pregnant with a lot, but I think we'll save that for we'll save that for the evening and the other sessions. But maybe I would just take maybe 10 minutes honestly. I have to honor your sacrifices. I know you want to receive, but you are tired. You need to eat. A good shepherd, remember. Ah. No, no. Listen, listen. You, you have to speak. You have to speak for yourself. There are people who... Lagos. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So maybe what, what I will just do within these few minutes, quite honestly, may just be to, just to inspire you. That, that's what I would want to do. Would leave all the time to really teach and minister. I know many of you, you just want that anointing, that impartation. For sure, it's, it's, it's yours in the conference. But, but then, let's just open our hearts. Few minutes just to inspire you. The word inspire is very important. It's, it's more than motivation. The Bible says there is a spirit in man. Elihu speaking. It says the inspiration the inspiration is some versions use the word breath so if it if it means for you to understand that um, you, you have to understand what happens you soon sit down the medical people you know there are times that you have to help someone survive by trying to breathe and then all of that uh, that, that is the idea of inspiration to give life to something that is dying already to give life to a dream to give life to something and you know sometimes quite honestly what we may need may not necessarily be a new revelation you just need God to talk to you to let you know that you are still there and you can make it and that's what I want to do five ten minutes is that all right God bless you just walk to two three people and tell them um, be ready for a mighty transformation two, three people, and then six. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 32. And Acts 20, I meant to say 32, just to share something that will bless our hearts. I'm, I'm really touched at our hunger and passion for God. And, and it's something that I want you to preserve. Because hunger is a sign of health. When people are sick, among the many things they lose is hunger. Their appetite is gone. So if your hunger remains, it's proof that you're intact in the spirit. He says, and now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Then he says, this word is able to do two things. One, to build you up, to build you up. Second, to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. And so when the word of God comes, it does many things among them, to build you up the word of God does not just come to deliver results to your life because results are a waste if you don't have the capacity to both receive and preserve them 
Are we together now? In Matthew 25, the Bible says he distributed talents not according to his love for them, according to their several ability, meaning he had put them through a system of tests to know their abilities. Are we together now? So it, it matters that um, the word of God builds us to the level where whatever we receive from God can be preserved. Many believers are, we're, we're, we're very conscious of reception and we like receiving and that's wonderful. But we need to pay attention sometimes to the vessel so that we don't waste the things we continue to receive. Are we together? Conferences like these um, are spiritual feasts. God just creates a buffet of revelations, keys granted unto us. But many times... Um, the soil, the vessel, the capacity is not there. And so no matter how great what we receive, we are only motivated for a few days, maybe a few weeks, and we go back to the same doors that we once held the keys. How many of you have lost the key to a car or the key to something? Now you once had it, but right now you are standing near a door and it's so painful because you, you once held the key, but you could not hold it long enough. You see that and you got to the door and then the key was not there so it's, it's not so much about all of the dissemination of information we have to trust God to open up our hearts to build capacity and the Bible says the Word of God is able to do that to build you build you and then when you sustain that stamina spiritually intellectually physically then it can award you an inheritance Galatians chapter 4 says, an heir, as long as he's a child, incapacitated, differeth not from a slave, although he be lord of all. He says, but he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed. So God is obsessed, especially in this season, with providing that we are people of stature in the spirit. So if he invests an anointing upon you, that there is vessel enough to be able to receive it you see if you pour one gallon of oil over a cup it, the the oil only the 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 oil that represents the size of the cup will be preserved every other thing will be wasted and that's what has been happening to so many of us we sit down under extremely heavy anointings but our capacities are so small and so whilst we are writing praying receiving this you find out that you go away with something very little it's not a deficiency of the grace supplied is that your capacity is very small that was the recommendation of the prophet in second kings chapter 4 he says go and borrow vessel the oil is not small. The oil only assumed the shape of the vessel. And then he says, borrow vessels. He said, borrow not a few. And then lock yourself and now begin to pour and see the potential in that oil. Are we together now? Yes, there has to be capacity. Lord, help us within these few minutes that we have to share in the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor Ibuku was sharing with you a lot of things. I couldn't get all of it in the office, but I know that she was challenging you. And, and, and let me tell you this. Cultivate a healthy respect for people who have results. Um, we live in a very arrogant generation where we trivialize the achievements of people. Anytime, you see, results are proofs that principles have been kept are we together consistent results are proof that mastery has been gained so when you see people who god has invested a dimension of possibilities and then they love god in the midst of it it matters that you listen to them are we together now Quite honestly, I, I, I didn't want to just come up and say anything again because I felt that what she had deposited, she, uh, this, this is a woman that God has helped and um, she's an evidence of the help of God. Not many people can have certain levels of influence and still preserve their convictions about God. So that already is something to inspire us. Do not trivialize results when you see it. 
do not ignore greatness when you see it we we are masters of demeaning the achievements of people and sometimes we may do it in a well-meaning way because success has a side effect it 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 judges your excuses and and many times it, it, it can frustrate the laziness and all of that and so sometimes we don't react properly and so what is there about pastor is it not god that just anoints people no don't do that you must have a healthy respect if success were easy as easy as breathing then everybody will have it are we together now so i i just really want us to cultivate that if this is a lesson if i inspire you to have that because you see let me tell you most of the people who are close to great men never receive from them because they have lost the fortitude to perceive the people as touching what they truly represent every man is multifaceted and sometimes you can peg yourself at a dimension he's my father he's my brother and forget that that father and brother is also the king of kings and the lord of lords the ability to have the wisdom to navigate through those dimensions is very important the next prophet was supposed to come out of the band of prophets that Elijah was training not from a farmer he was already mentoring a group of prophets they were called sons of the prophet legitimate mentees but they just knew this guy was a prophet very soon I'm sure they started prophesying too here and there he would say something and they'll say confirmation it's not new I already knew and then he left and met a very naive farmer who began to follow him passionately as touching what he represented to the point that Elijah was even going and none of the people in the school thought it serious to say you are going so what happens to us do you know the Lord is taking your mercy we know we've been praying for him to go so that we can have a chance to shine and Elisha says no it was never about the office I'm seeking something a double portion I wonder what they did with Elisha the Bible doesn't give us the details but it would have been a shock to turn and see somebody who was not in the lecture room with you yet holding what you went to the lecture for hallelujah respect greatness respect greatness more people should be great in lagos because you have the privilege of access to extremely great people your territory has the privilege of extremely successful people on all fronts you must maintain the fortitude go so far don't be ashamed of your desperation to pursue the wisdom of people she has poured out her mind and you know the bible says for as a man thinketh most times we focus on the exterior when you see someone with a nice car you know a nice this and that but you see we we are built inside out listen carefully God never builds people outside in maybe I should share just one scripture uh, you you're, you're now your hunger is now affecting me you see hunger has something it just keeps drawing I said 10 minutes and um, Isaiah 37 Isaiah 37 and verse 31 we give you god the highest praise from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same we give you god the highest praise from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same very simple song we give you god the highest praise from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same we give you god the highest praise from the rising with me the Bible says and the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah how will they grow 
they shall again take root downwards and then bear fruit upwards. The fruit is only a sign that the root got deep enough. Deep enough to touch where the nutrients are. This is how God builds people. The journey never starts from the fruits. The journey starts from the root. Nobody really has the privilege of seeing the root. Yes, that is the reason why the fruits come. Are we together now? And so when God begins to build a man, he builds you from inside. And it's very frustrating, especially in our world, because we are obsessed about physical results. And so even for you, the one who God is training and working on, after a time period and you cannot see any physical result to relate with, you can, you can, you can take that to mean you are not making progress. And you see, in the dealings of God with men, many times he will not tell you how far you are going in the journey because it has the ability to corrupt your passion. Are we together? So even when you are doing well, sometimes God will be silent. You will never have a chance to see your report card because when you see how good you are, you are performing, you say, God, so why are you pushing me if I'm doing it this well? And so he, he limits your perception on how good you are because he wants your root to go down there are many of you the kind of grace you have now you are qualified to be general overseers already but god will never tell you because if he tells you you will run away and graduate yourself from the school of the spirit so he will leave you but the day he will announce you you will see the excellency of your foundation you become unshakable no matter what wind blows you know, when, when rain comes and blows with all kinds of winds, it takes away some of those little shrubs and all those things, but there are trees that just stand as if nothing is happening. Formidable, stable. That's what God is doing in our lives. So you, you, need, to, you need to understand that he builds us from inside out. Especially for many of us right now because... Um, when you allow some time in your life and you don't see the results you expect, financial results, physical results, and so on and so forth, chances are that because you are, ex you, are, you, are, you are dealing with a world that is sensual, listen carefully, many times people can, they can laugh you and talk you into becoming angry at the way God is building you. Are we together? Sometimes you have the privilege of meeting with your friends, maybe old classmates, and you see everyone physically successful as it were, having all the things that we think represent success. And here you are standing and they say, so what are you doing now with your life? He says, seeking God, loving God. And they say, I see. Um, you know, they try to be as polite as possible, but it's very clear that they look like they have an advantage over you. And you, you can leave them smiling and act like it doesn't matter and then get back home and say, God, what are we doing? Let me just know if I'm wrong so that I can correct it fast. And God says, no. I saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing to me, a little boy. And Jacob descended and said, are you saying one day, myself, your mother, and your brothers will bow to you. The brothers heard it and said, we will kill you before that vision comes to pass. He never knew that for the next 12 years, he would be under a very serious system. Be, beware when God announces favor on you because it always doesn't look like it. The moment he told Mary you are highly favored, it was trouble that followed her from that time. The scandal of managing an issue with a suspect that will have to be a rabbi. You can't say a ghost made me pregnant. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's more polite to say I don't know how, what happened. Imagine explaining to intelligent people that a ghost made me pregnant. And I am pregnant but I, I, I confess I'm still a virgin. The people are already angry that you are pregnant out of wedlock. You manage the situation by silence, not explaining that, honestly, God is my witness, I'm still a virgin. Yet God calls that favor. Ah! God calls trouble, catastrophe in your life, 
favor. Your, the man who a responsible man, a carpenter, about to get married to you, you are losing your marriage. God still calls it favor. He said you are highly favored, not just favor. Mm. Could it be that what you are going through is favor? That God is saying it's a privilege because there is monetary value in that pain you are going through. You will get to a point where only whoever has gone through that pain can stand where you stand. There are rankings in the spirit. There is a pain factor like a ladder. There are times you will stand somewhere. The condition to stand there is pain. Who has gone through that level of persecution? And you check around and find out no one within your vicinity. And God says, you stay there. That is an exalted position that God brought you. He calls it favor. There are times you will share a story that people will wish they had your background so that they can receive the honor. But they are too innocent to receive that kind of honor. They can't lie that their school fees were paid by themselves. Everything just worked well for them. So your pain today, you say, Lord, what are you doing? And God says, it's my way of favoring you. I'm giving you a testimony that is so rare. Hmm. Is God speaking to someone? I just want to inspire you and then we'll share the grace and then come back in the evening. It's true. You must learn to interpret the happenings in your life from the lens of the Spirit. Remember the conference, these are matters of the Spirit. So as a man of God, you get up with a lot of zeal to start a church and you find out that they drive you away and say, No, Mr. Man, you are not starting that church. And he said, Lord, I thought you anointed me. And he says, That's favor. You keep watching because it is because of that one testimony that many people will invite you not even because of your anointing when they hear the pain you have got the, you, the, your pain qualifies you to speak to kings not everything that looks negative is demonic we have to be men of the spirit to discern joseph is in the pit and God calls it progress. How do you explain being in a, a dry well as progress? And the brothers sell him, the Ishmaelites, sons of perdition, take a child of promise off to Egypt. Any other person would not take him to Egypt. Egypt was his place of destiny. And he got there. Joseph did not know that that pain was the preservation of a nation. Even the Messiah was in the loins of that pain. Joseph gets to Egypt and then it looked like things were going on well. And all of a sudden here comes this woman coming to create trouble for him. He was trusting that one day, maybe during the Pharaoh's birthday, they will release some prisoners. And here is a woman who comes to scandalize him and say, this young man tried to rape me. And Pharaoh gets angry and says, okay, I've given you some privileges. Ah, Jesus. You will be surprised that it's because they drove you from that house rent that you were on your way going and you collided with the person and, and, and if you were smiling, that person would not stop to listen to you. It was because you were frowning. He said, what happened? You said, they drove me. He said, do you have a job? He said, no. He said, meet me tomorrow. So that frown was favor. If you were smiling, you just say, bless you, see you in church. Was, was it not because of a, a disturbing dream that interpretation started? If the dreams gave them joy, Joseph had nothing to do. They were always in the prison there. But Joseph looked at their countenance and he said, something is wrong with you. Your, your pain is calling for my ministry. And he said, tell me. He said, we had a dream, a, a nasty dream. And he begins to laugh and destiny is colliding. Yet Joseph just knows a man. Look, I'm sure Joseph will tell them, let me interpret and tell you my own predicament here. Hmm. I saw the sun, the moon, 11 stars bowing and you would think it will happen by Jacob I mean carrying a Joseph one day and saying everybody here is a destiny child no the path to favor 
and the path to greatness is seldom done in a way listen and God conceals it like this so that Satan himself will not know I will teach you in the night this strategy is what is called the hidden wisdom of God that not even the princes would know God conceals you the same strategy was used for Moses because when they began to kill people they put Moses in a basket and he was in Egypt if he was known satan will make sure how can you be in the center of witchcraft and yet not known the mystery called the hidden wisdom of god the bible said it was kept for our glory that's how we find glory so when that dimension of hidden wisdom comes even you can't explain what is happening in your life that's why we walk by faith if everything about your life can be explained it's a sign that god is not with you there will be many gaps. Let me tell you the truth. It's true. Mm. A time must come when they say, what exactly is happening to you? And you say, honestly, if I know all, I'm lying. All I know is I love God. All I know is the dreams and the visions I see. All I know is that I go to bed and I see myself laying hands on people. All I know is that I, I see myself heading a conglomerate. It's so big, I'm ashamed to say it. Watch this. The hidden wisdom of God is doing something in your life. You may not know it. I'm inspiring you. It may not look like it. But something is happening to you. You are highly favored. And a scandal comes to you. And that scandal begins to push you to do certain things. One day, 11, the sun, moon, 11 stars will bow to you. And here is the young man in a cave. A dungeon, the Bible says. Then he sees the wine presser and the buckler and interprets his dream. And then it happens that way. And he said, Do you know that whether Joseph inter Joseph did not prophesy? So whether he interpreted the dream or not, it would have happened anyway. But it would have happened, and Joseph would not be remembered. The privilege of interpretation was what connected him to what was going to happen. And the man forgot him. And after two years, God said, it's now time for that prophecy to come to pass. Someone is going through something now that you cannot explain. And by every standard, you cannot explain. Every time you pray, it looks like what happens is, God, where are we going now? People ask you, why did you come to Lagos? You say, I, I, I'm not even sure. Was it, it, I think I was coming to check somebody and just cry my heart. That's how I got here. Oh, the Lord says favor. Listen to me. I'm inspiring you. Men will laugh at you. But tomorrow, the sun, the moon, and 11 stars must bow. You don't look like it now. Sometimes they will call you and say, you are, you are a useless child. I've always known that this you're seeking God. You've been a graduate for five years, acting like a fool, behaving stupid, and you go back to God with that report, and God is silent. I want you to know that when God is silent, learn to hear the voice of silence. Silence is a voice. It speaks. When God is silent, he's saying something. Are we together now? That's my inspiration. We walk by faith. Not everything in your life can be explained. And if you allow carnal men to help you interpret your life, they will take you out of Egypt to go and meet your father, which will look like a testimony. But then you would have aborted the throne. If someone wanted to help Joseph, will he help him to meet Pharaoh? No. If someone wanted to help Joseph, he would try to smuggle him out back to Jacob and Jacob will say thank you you've given me my son but Israel will die Jacob will die the covenant will never work beware of those who love you too much to allow you get to the place of destiny there are people who love you too much they look at what you are going through and it looks like they they, they love you too much they will suggest and say is, is it worth it we can go back and someone is almost there and the devil will try to use you know Satan can use positive attributes about people to still destroy you Satan can use a man's compassion to be a weapon against you 
Look at what happened to Peter. No, Jesus, I, I, I love you. I mean, it was the compassion of Peter that was being used by Satan. And Jesus said, no, if you don't, if you are not a man of the spirit, you say, Jesus, you are harsh. What kind of person are you? Get thee behind me, Satan. That's not compassion. He's taking the vulnerability of Peter and using it to manipulate Jesus away from the cross. Listen, pass through whatever you have to pass through knowing that although it may not make sense it is still called favor favor is not always positive and worthy of laughter and celebration at first there are pathways my brothers and my sisters that is so rare god is passing you you are walking your way to your sabbath by the time you get to that dimension you will sit in a seat that no power can take back the pain is a track record There are men today, the only thing prospering them is their stories, not their new revelation. They go all around the world continually, inspiring people with a story they've been saying for many years. And you'll be wondering, are you not tired of this story? The question is, who else has that kind of story? Until they find a worthy replacement for that story, that man remains at the top. But when he was passing through that story, he would never have known that that story had monetary value. Whenever they are organizing a conference that requires someone with that kind of track record, they search around. They are tired of inviting him. Every year they are inviting him, but the question is who else? Joseph said, let the king search for a man who is discreet and wise. He was daring the king. I dare you, search Egypt if you will find a man with my track record. He was just using a polite way to dare him. I dare you, search if there is any man who has been scandalized in Egypt. Search if there is any man who has had the pain of rejection from his brothers. Search if there's any man who has understood the pain of being, of being innocent yet on the ground. And the king said, there is no man. Immediately, not later. Ah, immediately, my brothers. Let hope, let it rise. Please rise up on your feet. Darkness trembles in your home. Just sing this song one more time and we pray. Hey, let hope die. Darkness trembles in your home. Hold the hands of someone close to you and just pray in one minute. And say, Lord, perfect what you are doing in my life. It may not make sense, but grant me the grace and the insight in the spirit to know that in the spirit all things can work for the good of them that love the Lord and those who are the called according to his purpose give me a correct interpretation of the happenings in my life let me not abort my journey to greatness that you have called favor but the world around me is calling weakness the world around me calling it defeat the world around me calling it an, a, an instrument of shame. Help me see that my joblessness can be the favor that makes me an entrepreneur. Help me see that the disappointments that I've had in relationships may be the platform for the ministry God is calling me into. Thank you for being a part of our broadcast. You know, we never like to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Coming into Christ is beyond joining a church, is beyond a religion. It is joining God's family. And that is done when you believe in Christ Jesus. So I just want to lead you right away now. If you are, if you want to give your heart to Christ, just say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and rose again and that you paid for my sins. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And from today, I belong to you. If you have said those words, will be late, you are born again. You are part of God's family right now. You can go ahead and rejoice about it. 
And if you want to contact us, just check the address is written on the screen. God bless you. We love you. Stay blessed.